everything from Maximum PC here at AMD's uh, Tech Day. I'm here speaking with Dan Baker from Oxide Games. And Dan, can you tell us what we're looking at back here? Yeah, this is our latest game. We're working with Stardock called Ashes of the Singularity. And this is a, a large scale RTS in the same vein as such games as Total Annihilation, Supreme Commander. And what we really wanted to do is recreate some of these uh, massive. Uh, RTSs in with modern updated with modern technology and some modern concepts to improve gameplay. Cool. And, and uh, what's you know really unique about your game is you know it looks really great, um, but you guys are throwing like you know when you say large scale you really mean large scale. You guys are throwing thousands upon thousands of units, and that often requires a uh, you know a beastly computer, or at least so we thought. Can you sort of talk about what's um, what's powering this right now? Uh, so, right now we're demonstrating Ashes running on AMD's latest desktop APU. And one of the really innovative things about the Nitrous Engine, which is the engine that we built specifically for Ashes and other titles that we're going to develop, is that we are very multi-core aware. So, we can scale across a lot of cores. A lot of players have been asking, I don't understand why my game is slow, I have four CPUs, and I notice that only one or two of them are being used. So we've been listening to that, so yes, you're right, we should be able to use all these CPUs. You, you pay for them, you have them, our game should be able to use them. So we've invested a lot in being able to uh, scale up to a lot of CPU cores. Um, we've also invested a lot on next generation APIs, which are also super important to uh, being able to use more cores. And this is allowing us to have a game where you can have thousands of units and it will not slow down. It will be able to play nice and smooth and reliably. And that is really important for um, our customers. We didn't want to say that we could support up to a certain amount of units. We want to be able to, have, to still maintain a very good frame rate while doing that. Okay, and uh, I mean, so this this computer is also. Uh, do you know which uh, APU this is running? This is back here. Uh, it's the latest desktop APU. Is it so a very what the model number is, but it's like the very top that's KMD exactly. Gotcha. It's the and God of Mary one, but I don't know what the the product name for the God of Mary. Okay, and then you also have a um, a 290x uh, graphics card. Yes, so this is my 290x. So, so what I thought was kind of interesting about um, what you guys are doing with your engine is that you're able to leverage um, the integrated graphics on top of the discrete. Uh, and I, I think you said you got an additional you know, 20% uh, performance gain from that. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so one of the things that's very common now with our, our players is that most people have integrated graphics and possibly discrete as well. So almost every mainstream CPU has an integrated graphics. So we um, realized that there's some performance sitting on the table there and there, that uh, people have got this extra uh, graphics chip that's not really being used. So we, when working with Microsoft and AMD, to say, well, how, how can we take advantage of this? And so what we have, uh, are demonstrating here is that we can actually use both your integrated and your discrete together to get a performance win. And so in this case, we're looking at a, an APU that has 8 GCN cores, and you've got a 290X, which is 36 GCN cores. So you've got 44 GCN cores total. And before, we were only able to use 36 of them, the ones on the 290, just because we didn't have a, a way from a technology standpoint to access those. And so when you did this, you're, you're, um, when you played a game with a discrete card and an APU, you effectively didn't get to use part of what you bought. So uh, what we've developed is a way of having the integrated assist the uh, uh, discrete GPU. And so if you actually look at the game, you'll notice that some of the objects, like the trees and the buildings, some of the smaller units are red, and some of them are not. And the red ones are, are a visual marker for demonstration purposes of, of showing you what's happening on the integrated GPU and what's happening on the discrete. So everything in red is actually being happened by the APU and being uploaded to the discrete uh, GPU. And this gives us um, pretty close to what we would expect on paper. We would expect 36 to 44 to be about 15 to 20 percent perf wins, and that's what we're seeing. So we're pretty happy with that. I think earlier you were saying that it could mean the difference of, of hitting 30 frames per second or not in some yes. cases, right? I mean, and that's that's the 
that, that demo, that uh, video footage that we put together, we actually were at a, a pretty intense battle and we're noticing that like, we have graphic settings turned up, but we can't quite maintain 30. But when we add the uh, integrated graphics on top of it, which you already have, our players already have, all of a sudden you're up at 15, 20% and you're evenly making 30 frames a second. So the, the ability to do this can be the difference between able to play the game nice and smooth and just a little bit less than you'd want. Now, you know, right now we're running a AMD plus AMD setup, AMD APU plus um, you know, AMD GPU. Um, could this theoretically work with uh, you know Intel and, and NVIDIA setup as well? Um, yeah, in fact, there's nothing that that's exclusive to um, just working on AMD technology. Right now, we're demonstrating it on AMD, but uh, D3 D12 enables this scenario across multiple GPU vendors. There's probably a little bit of a breadth advantage. Both GPUs are from the same vendor um, because some of the formats can be shared and a little more efficient. But in general, you're right. This, this technology can work with, with an Intel integrated and a CPU or on an APU. If you had an NVIDIA card with an APU, you'd also get some more benefits. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I think I, I asked because if it only works with you know AMD plus AMD, um, developers might look at that like, well, um, that's a kind of a rare situation or it's, it's more rare and it's probably not worth my time to to develop for. Was it, was it pretty time consuming to actually integrate that feature? Can you talk about that process? Uh, so it wasn't for, the way our engine works. We have a different learning architecture, which decouples shading and rasterization. So it turned out for us that it, that we're a natural fit for this sort of thing. So it really wasn't a huge amount of work. It took a few weeks to prototype it, and the hardest part was that no one had done this before. So there was some back and forth between us and AMD. Um, to, to figure out like like how do we do this and get a win? I, I think going forward, the path is more clear as this gets more supported. Um, that is not going to be a, a you know, major issue today on higher engine works. Gotcha. Do you see it being more you know widely adopted this one? We we believe that most of our I mean our data tells us that most consumers, the majority of consumers, have both an integrated and a discrete GPU if they have a discrete GPU. It's very rare that we see a machine with a discrete GPU and no integrated. So for us we believe most consumers will benefit if you can take advantage of the integrated. Okay. And, and so what has exactly uh, you know allowed you to make this possible? Is it is it entirely your engine or is it DirectX 12? The two pieces of technology that we need are our engine has a specific way of handling shading that is uh, a newer method of doing it that's sort of different than what's been done before, and that's one critical piece. And the next critical piece is absolutely essential because we need next generation APIs, not DirectX 12. The previous APIs like DirectX 11, we um, didn't have any control over the topology of the system, so we didn't know what um, we didn't really understand or had the ability to know what GPUs on the system, nor, nor how many GPUs are in the system to be able to direct work between the two. But the new explicit level API, this is next generation of technology, uh, gives us more control over it. So we can see the, the entire topology of all the GPUs in the system and, and customize our rendering solution. So before when you had multiple GPUs in the system, the common way of doing it, which is called AFR, would have one frame happen to one GPU and then another frame happen to another GPU. And while that works fairly well, the problem is that that uh, you have to have two GPUs are virtually identical, which is not necessarily a common situation. And we also noticed a lot of reliability problems because the driver didn't have enough information to properly do this, and the application didn't necessarily know what's happening. With explicit multi-GPU, we can have control over this, and we can make a much more reliable uh, experience for players, and now multi-GPU situations don't have to be this second-class citizen. They'll just work naturally, and in this case, we're not even going to uh, tell you that it's happening. You'll just notice there's an extra GPU, we'll enable it, and you'll just see a 